Hi go-getters, queens, and everyone in between. It's your girl Grace, and welcome to my channel, Gracefully. Today, I am at Bishop's Cut and Color with Jeff. I am eight months locked, and he is gonna go ahead and do a retwist for me. Also, we will be answering the questions that you had from the last video. So, before we get started, I want you to go ahead, hit that notification bell, make sure you subscribe, Let's get started. All right, everyone, here's Jeff. Hey, how y'all doing? I just saw Grace's hair, and I am so in love with it. <laughs> I want my hair to be like this when it grows back. Look mm -hmm. at this, y'all. She has really pretty results. Her hair is pretty much locked, you guys. Um, at this point, I mean, they're full grown locks. Look at this, how perfect they are. I even told her I have my favorites. <laughs> I was like, look at this one, it's so pretty. But y'all had questions for us, and I met quite a few of the fans uh, yeah. of the channel. I told her I was walking through Whole Foods. Hey, Whole Foods. Hey, Whole Foods. Hey, walking through everywhere, mm. and I saw people, and they mentioned that they saw me on Grace's channel. Uh, don't be afraid to come up and say hi and ask questions. I'm still located at Bishop's Cut and Color. So what we're going to do today, uh, we decided for Grace's here that we're just going to lock the new growth. And the reason being is we do actually like the volume in her hair. I love the volume. Yes. I personally do not like flat, flat hair. I like shape in the hair too. So I agree with her. Um, we're just gonna go through and do a wash real quick. I'm gonna do two washes and I'm gonna condition a little bit because we wanna keep the scalp still maintained. And then we're gonna go from there. All right, sounds good. We'll be right back. All right, so he just finished washing my hair and he's starting to retwist. All right, so now we're gonna start the question and answer portion. I'm so excited because we got these questions from you, the go-getters. So here we go. The first question is from Fierce and Free. I am almost two months into my lock journey. I'm loving my experience, but what can I use on my scalp for dandruff? I only use oil on my scalp, no products. Only use oil on your scalp. So here's the thing about only using oil on your scalp. The thing is, is if you only use oil, if you put oil on top of water, what scientifically happens is that it does not uh, adhere to the water. So if you're taking out all the moisture from your scalp, just putting only oil on your scalp. So you want to make sure that you put something back in that's moisture in it, like a hydrated cream. It might have a oil in it, but maybe it might have a, um, there's so many things with an aloe or avocado that you can put onto your scalp. So always keep in mind, if you take oil and you sit it on top of water, it's just gonna break into little circles and particles. It's not gonna adhere into the water. So if you want moisture, oil is typically for shine and if you're using it as a finish. It's not really used for moisture. Now I use rose water, so that you said there there was a difference between water and rose water. Right. Rose water actually is going to be more of a stringent. Yeah. So it's going to cleanse the scalp more. So you can use the rose water to go in to clear off the scalp. Say if you have a buildup or something. Also keep in mind with those type of natural products, some things have more higher pH levels and more alkalinity than others. So you're going to dry out as opposed to adding more moisture. So keep that in mind when you're using things like, um, let's say, lemon juice. You never want to put that in your hair because that's going to raise the uh, alkalinity in your hair. It's going to keep going and keep going and never stop. So always, that's the same thing as like if you were using a relaxer and not neutralizing it. So you got to think of it in that. So as far as her dandruff is concerned, is there anything that you recommend for dandruff? I would say get a good clarifying shampoo for the dandruff. Also, keep in mind, it's always good to make sure that you're getting your scalp checked by a dermatologist. This goes into uh, the care of the scalp. The stylist, we can't recommend every single thing. We can only do the manicure, and we can only do, I guess you could say, just the health. But when it comes to skin, you always want to make sure that you're going to the dermatologist to make sure that you're not having any overproduction of, uh, let's say, flaking in the scalp. It could be something you're eating, it could be something that you're intaking. So I always recommend you to go to a doctor if you feel like it's just too much. 
Um, another thing is if you have a stylist that isn't telling you that type of thing, then I'd be a little bit concerned because again, we're not physicians, we are hair stylists, we are not, uh, what do they say, uh, magical people? <laughs> we're actually hair stylists. Right. So we can only tell you so much when it comes to the health of skin, but we can tell you, hey, if you feel like this has been a problem you've had for a while, you could do anything. I had a client that had an allergic reaction to avocado, and what exists in those products is an avocado. Uh, so when we removed, when I told her, hey, go get it checked up and see if you have an allergy, she didn't check. It was an allergy, so we removed all of that out of her products, and now her hair is growing long and healthy. So it's those type of things you want to keep in mind. So hair is only goes so far that we can tell you because we can't physically go in and scrape and test, you want to make sure that you're doing those little extra things in between seeing your stylist. Awesome. And that's how you're going to um, find a good stylist is somebody that's going to tell you the truth and be like, hey, I noticed you have this problem. I can't tell you that this is the end. So what I can tell you though is I think you should go get it checked and then you can come back to me and then we can talk about what's going to be best for your skin. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. But we answer your question fierce and free. The next two questions are about color. So the first question is from Reese Sai, who says, when can you color your hair with starter locks? And Satorially Black asks, so my question to Jeff is, I have never ever colored my natural hair. I'll be seven weeks locked now on Monday, and I'm possibly wanting to color my locks, but I'm really nervous. And what month is the best month to color my locks? I've been told six months, but I just want to make sure. I don't want to interrupt the lock-in process. The amount of time in which they're telling you to lock your hair, which is six months, is actually the correct time. And the reason being is because that lock hasn't had enough time to actually lock. I think we're actually, what, six months, six eight, eight months? Eight, eight months, right now. yeah. Eight. She's actually at the amount of time to actually, we can go in and put in highlights if we wanted, we can color these, because they're locked. So you don't want to rush the process of putting chemicals in your hair immediately. I would even say almost to a year, just because we want to make sure that that lock is really secure, and we want to make sure that it's healthy, and then before that, I would always recommend to get um, a detox before you do the color, and then a detox after the color, because you do want to strip that chemical out of your hair. So that's very important. The next question is from Latrina Lene. Her question is, my question for Jeff is, how does he feel about the use of henna as far as keeping the hair healthy? Not just for coloring the hair, using it in tea rinse, conditioners, protein treatment, etc. See, okay. Everybody has their opinion about henna. Me personally, uh, henna was used as a dye on clothes. So me being a colorist, I do not recommend using henna in the hair, and this is why. That's another product that's gonna raise the alkalinity in hair and not stop. And also, if later on in the future you decide that you don't wanna have uh, dark black hair or you decide you don't wanna have brown hair, when you go to a color specialist, we cannot uh, remove henna out of the hair with um, hydrogen peroxide because the two combust and they explode and the hair melts off. Wow. And that's just what happens. A lot of people don't know that. Or it could be a possibility that you go to the green but I've seen it happen before. Wow. So I would not recommend you putting henna in your hair and it is not used for, um, it's, uh, it wasn't originally used for dyeing hair. People do use it because they want to be more natural, but if you do that, I would suggest stick with that and do not decide to go blonde or any other color after that. Because if you do and you don't tell us, and you come to us and we put chemical in your hair, it's just gonna melt right off. And that's just what happens. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. So that's why you don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this next question, at first I didn't even know if I wanted to address it because I found that it was a little bit negative. However, people's opinions are people's opinions, so I'm going to go ahead and read it to you anyway, and Jeff will answer this for you. So Ebony Roots says, a lot of that budding looked more like bunch of, I don't know, he didn't seem very knowledgeable on the products he's using. Are they creating buildup? Okay, 
So a lot of the products that I use, I make sure that I do research on before I use. Also, I'm somebody that's a big advocate when I had locks to use every single thing that I would use in a client's hair on my hair. Anything that I would use in my hair, I would never use if it wasn't good in a client's hair. So I always make sure that I know that it's going to be safe in the client's hair. Another thing is, is every single lock is going to have its own jerk in itself within the hair. There's no budding that, I mean, no bunching in her hair that's not supposed to be in there. So see, there's no bunching. A lot of it is budding. It's pretty much, <laughs> it's pretty much budding. Um, every single lock in Grace's hair is very beautiful. I actually absolutely love them. Uh, as far as the knowledge that I have, I'm 14 years experience. I have plenty of knowledge. You heard that? <laughs> 14 years experience. <laughs> Licensed colorists have worked with such people as Paul Mitchell, a lot of specialists, um, you name it, uh, Goldwell specialists, Kevin Murphy, I've worked with a lot of people. Yeah. So I have a lot of knowledge and I stand behind that knowledge and I stand behind my certificates. Right. <laughs> so we appreciate your comment and like you said, everyone is entitled to, to their, their own opinion. opinion. However, the comment section, Ooh. mostly everyone talked about how knowledgeable Jeff was and I 100% agree, and I have this back, but, but thank you. Oh, oh no. another thing I would always suggest to with anybody is always do your research on products. Even if it's not the stylist, always do your research and ask people what they feel like is done for their hair. And then also, don't ever feel afraid to call the manufacturer because the number is always on the product and ask them what they put in their product. That's what I would say. And to answer your last question, no, I do not have build up. Uh, Thank you. Not have build up I don't. Sure I don't. It. We detox every single time she goes in here because yes. I'm like, no dirty hair for me. I'm big on not having dirty hair. <laughs> <laughs> we just have to You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I want to mention a little bit about product knowledge and education. Um, this is actually a product that I'm using right now as a clarifier by Sebastian. This is not a uh, advertisement for Sebastian, but I just wanted to give you all a little bit of knowledge. If you go online and you ever have questions about products, nine times out of ten, that product line does have a app in which you can interact with the app and it'll tell you a lot about the product. I know especially that Wella and Sebastian are owned by um, a big umbrella, Cody, as well as um, Global Elite. And if you go to their website, there is an app and you can walk you through each and every ingredient within that product and why it would work for you. So I highly would recommend you to do your research on your different products that you have because they do have ways you can research the product. All right, so this next question is similar to a previous question. It's from Javon Bennett. My question for Jeff is, what would I need to put on my scalp to hydrate it and keep it from flaking so bad? Okay, so with hydrating, we always want to make sure that we're putting the moisture back in. I want to go back to a question about oils. Let's always remember that with certain things, um, oil is more used for the manicure, not for the medical. So you always want to look at the product. If it's saying we're going to put back in moisture and repair or hydrating, that means it's going to go into that hair strand, it's going to go underneath that cuticle, and it's going to rehydrate that hair. Also, you want to always make sure that you're using something, let's say with aloe in it, you want to use something that you know is going to retain moisture in your oods, aloes. No oil is going to retain moisture in the hair. Oil is again used for shine and luster, so that means it's more of a manicure. So you want to think if you're doing your nails, you know there's a top sheet and then there's like the top coat that's going to be more like for your shine, not for the moisture. You got to put your moisture in your creams and that kind of thing and then you finish off with the oil. Right. So always make sure, like right now how I'm going in and I'm putting in some Cantu on the scalp, that's going to put in her moisture back into that scalp again. And it's going to put it back into the hair strand and then I'm going to finish off with a little bit of mousse that has a little bit of oil in it to give the shine finish. So that's usually how we do it. Mm -hmm. The next question is from New Grace, New Beginnings. 
My question is, and by the way, I like your name with the grace in it. What sort of question should I ask at a consultation to determine if the stylist is an advocate for the health of my hair more so than the aesthetics? So I would always ask is more so about, you know, rather than just the experience of the stylist, you always want to ask the stylist how they feel about manicuring and medical hair. They should be able to break down the products. They should have a little bit of knowledge of what's going into your hair. So I guess, you know, they should know. Me personally, I have a background. A lot of people don't know this in herbs. So I'm going to know what it takes to put into hair. I know what's an astringent and what's not an astringent. Or what's uh, going to be more raising the porosity and what's not going to raise the porosity in hair. So typically, those kind of people are going to have more knowledge of what's going into the hair. I would look for somebody that's product obsessed and not looks obsessed. That's what I would do. So what questions um, should they ask the particular consultant? Like when they have that consultation, what should they ask? I would say ask them like, what's your favorite product? What do you use in your hair? I would look for somebody that relates to you. That's another question that I was getting into people with marketing. When you're looking for a stylist, make sure that you find somebody that you can relate to some kind of way or they feel like you have something in common with, whether it be they might be into eating healthy foods or working out. You want to find a stylist that relates to you because they're going to have the same habits as you, therefore they're going to be able to relate to your hair. So ask them questions like, hey, what do you like to do? What do you like to use? What type of scents do you like to use? Certain people don't work with certain things, don't work with certain people, certain scents. Certain people don't like them. It's the same thing as roses might be pretty for some people where they might be somebody died to other people. Right. So you gotta, you know, really create somebody that you can relate to. And then also you want to pick somebody that uses the type of stuff you would use in your hair. You hear what I'm saying? Because I would go to somebody that's gonna uh, that has slick bag, thick, thick gel up hair. I don't want <laughs> right. thick bag, thick gel up hair. <laughs> you know, I don't want And their name is Baby Girl 075. They said, Hi, I want to lock my hair, but I want to try two hand, uh, two hand twist maybe. What do you use on your hair? My hair is naturally curly, not sure if I should do coils or two strand twists. I'm also going to start with about the same length you did. I love to know what product you use on your hair. I do know I had a reaction to tea tree oil. Please help. Ooh, I like this question because it kind of goes back to all the other questions that we had about products earlier and what I just said about, you know, what, you, what works for one person isn't going to work for everybody else. Um, another thing is, is the two strange twists I'm not opposed to doing. It's just later on, you might have to go through and get some tightening done, which means you might have to have a little bit of an add-in around with some extra hair. You might have some crocheting you have to do down to tighten up that two strand. Um, I'm not opposed to doing it. I've done it on a few people and they love it. I feel like you get a thicker result. Depending on your wave pattern and your curl will depend on what type of block you should start with. Um, no other way is better than the other in my opinion. Um, some stylists prefer, or some lock technicians prefer to just do the uh, comb coil, and some prefer to do the two strand. And me personally, I like both. So it depends on the hair type. Um, as far as tea tree goes, I, okay, with tea tree, I'm both ways with it. I feel like tea tree can dry out the scalp, and then it also can help the scalp. But it depends on what type of tea tree you're using. Because if you're using essential oil, like natural, natural tea tree, yes, then if you're using, I guess, scented oil with the tea tree in it, then yeah, I can see how that would cause you a problem. 
So make sure that you're really paying attention again to the manufacturer's instructions and ingredients on the bottle. <laughs> now, what cream are you using to retwist my hair? I'm currently using a hand to coconut and uh, pearl cream right now, and I added just a tiny bit of gel to help hold a little bit. And know? what kind of gel? Because usually we're like no gel. No gel. So I'm using a very lightweight, lightweight gel by Sebastian, and it's just gonna grab the little strands in between since we're not taking our hair and twisting all the way down and clipping them down because we want that volume. But I do want the, the actual extra hair like this to stay down afterwards. But the rest, we just kind of want it to just lay flat as a group. And that's the reason why I went in with just a little bit of that through the end so it just lays down the rest of the Now, does this gel contain alcohol or? It doesn't contain alcohol. It actually does contain a little more aloe as opposed to alcohol. A lot of the um, funny thing is a lot of the professional lines now are having to compete with the open shelf lines. And everybody's going in and they're adding in aloes and all this extra stuff because now you're finding that the professional stuff is being sold in the stores. So I want y'all to pay attention to the way the industry is going now and here because a lot of those products that we were only able to buy are now being able to be bought in stores as well as a lot of those professional lines, not so professional lines, are becoming kind of matched with those lines. Yeah. So really I want to go back to always, always compare the ingredients on the back of the green, what you're putting in your hair, Read what you're eating. That's important too. That everything you're putting in your body and on your hair, you can't. You're not supposed to do that. Right. <laughs> you know. Exactly. So it's very important to do that, and then also stay away from alcohols. I always say to do that. And the way you know there's alcohol in the product if it's over centered. If it's way too over centered, then the chances are you're broken up. See, my thing is, I know a lot of our viewers are totally against alcohol. So when you said gel, I didn't want them to be like, oh, she's putting alcohol in her. No, no. he's talking about aloe. <laughs> aloe. So. I'm a big, big advocate on natural products, but also um, one of those people, too, that also says that like, everything natural you want to necessarily put in your hair. Like somebody asked me if they could put mayonnaise and eggs in their hair. That's definitely going to strip out. Don't do that. About color. Yeah, mm -hmm. it will. There's a lot of different things that you really have to read about because on the back end it might not be as good as what you think. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, same thing goes for like if you were using, uh, somebody said, can I use lemon to lighten my hair? It will lighten your hair, but also break your hair too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got that. Sounds <laughs> good. Yeah. All right, and the last question comes from Sonia Washington who asked, is he located in Houston, Texas? Absolutely. Yes, he is. I am located in Houston, Texas. I'm off of Yale at 2522. Uh, the soon number is uh, 100. Um, we're right next door to Johnny Goldbritz. They're a local bar in the Heights area. Um, come and check us out. We have a lot of cool businesses over there here as well. Uh, coffee shops, all kinds of things. We offer space for artists. We have hair shows, artist shows, all kinds of stuff. And he's the man. Yeah, I'm the manager here. Yeah. And then also, another thing, we have a lot of talented stylists here that we watch besides this man. So, check us out. Oh, yeah, Sam is here too, Sam guys. Is here, yeah, guys. Sam is here. <laughs> Sam he's is the one that started me out. Yeah. <laughs> That concludes the question and answer portion of this video. So now he's going to finish retwisting my hair. I'm going to go under the dryer. And the next time you see us, my hair will be done. And we will show you what it looks like. He just finished my hair. This is what eight months looks like. So he's going to describe my hair. So this is eight months of um, well, retwisting and twisting and... Um, getting a style. We haven't done a style yet. I'm sure we will at some point. Uh, this time what we did a little bit different is we didn't wrap them all the way down. And the reason being is because we wanted to keep the volume and then also it kind of gives a little more freeform, natural look. Um, 
difference is I did use this top guy as a little bit of gel with no alcohol in it, with more of an aloe base in it to kind of roll it down some because I did yeah. want some of the hairs to gather in. Um, so this is eight months so far. Yeah. It's pretty long. How do you feel with your hair this time? I love got, it. Oh, it feels great. It feels light. A lot better. Yeah, it feels light and fluffy. And I love it. Like, I like it this way too. It feels, like you said, a little more natural, even though the whole thing is natural anyway, but it does. Oh, I'm loving the texture of my hair. One more thing is I didn't use the Sebastian whip cream because we did live it a little bit more natural. I used their other um, mousse, which is like a, I think it's alpha mousse. And the reason why is because this one had to gather up the little hairs in between. Um, the whipped cream has a little more of a natural uh, aloe base as well, but I usually do that when I'm wrapping it all down because it gathers it all in the mousse. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel, Gracefully. Make sure you like this video and subscribe. Leave us a comment. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask. And don't forget, if you're in the Houston, Texas area, come by Bishop to get your hair done. Not only does he do locks, but he also does cut, color, uh, what else? I do short hair, long hair, Everybody's so come on and see yes. us and so as always remember there is no such thing as a box let's go get it